Imagine if you could get your Lottie animation to react to it, it's positioned in the viewport, so effectively playing the animation on scroll. Well you can, and it's quite simple, and in this video that's exactly what we're going to do. So you'll need to already have your site set up for Lottie animations, I've got a video about that which I'll leave somewhere up there. You might want to check that out first and then come back to this video. So first off we're going to cover adding this to animations from Lottie files and then later on we'll take a look at adding this interactivity to your own Lottie animations. Alright we're going to kick this one off in our website and if you scroll down you can see we've got a Lottie animation playing on loop. So if you followed the instructions and we're getting started with Lottie video you should have your player in a code block on the page. And over in the code injection you should have Lottie player's CDN which we're going to leave alone. This is just going to stay where it is. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to swap out the Lottie player in the code block. So we'll head over to lottiefiles.com. As always, link will be in the description. And find an animation that we want to use. And then we want to go to the interactivity section. And under add Lottie component to your HTML DOM, we're going to highlight and take a copy of the player. Back in Squarespace, we'll open our code block or add a new one. and paste in the player. I'm going to up the width to 100% as well and set the height to auto. And save. And it shouldn't be working, it should just be a static of the first frame of the animation, which is expected because now we need to set up the interactivity. So back in Lottie Files we need to get the interactivity library from via CDN. Again, we'll highlight and take a copy. And in Squarespace, we'll paste this into the header underneath the original Lottie Player CDN. Okay, the last thing we need is a bit of script, again, from Lottie Files. And we'll come down to the Lottie Scroll Relative to Container section. And then we'll grab this bit of script, making sure it's the one with the line container. We'll need this to trigger the animation. The other interactions don't have this, so we need to make sure we grab the right one. So we'll take a copy. And again, back in Squarespace, we'll paste this into the footer. And save. And it's still not working. There are a couple of reasons for this, though, and they're both to do with the IDs, so the player ID and the container ID. So first off the player ID, if we go back to the code block you can see that this player has got an ID of first Lottie. But the script in the footer was targeting a player with the ID of second Lottie. So we'll change player ID to first Lottie. Okay, the container ID next. This is the ID of the container that's sold on the Lottie player, which in our case is the code block that we put the player into. To get the ID of this I'm going to open Squarespace block identifier for Chrome. As always, link in the description. And I'll click to take a copy. Let's close this down. And we'll paste it between the quotation marks. And save. And we should have a fully functioning scrolly Lottie animation thing. Now if you're using your own animations it's handy to know how many frames it contains. When we brought the animation in from Lottie Files it automatically adds the corresponding amount of frames to the script. But let's bring in our own animation and see what happens. You can see when we scroll down it's behaving normally but then it disappears. That's because our frames are set to 180 but this particular animation has a lot less than that. I did do quite an extensive bit of research on how to find out the exact number of frames an animation in a JSON file contains. But I couldn't find any info anyway. Maybe I was being a bit too specific with my search. Either way, no problem, we can fix this in Squarespace. So this first line is saying start the animation of frame 0 and then play to the final frame, which in our previous animation was 180. So for this one, let's take it down to 120. And save. And it's better, but it's still not quite there. Let's try 70. Near enough, but you can see it still disappears before it leaves the viewport. Let's go with 60. And there we go, that's spot on. So it's just a case of fine tuning this frame number then to get it right for your animation. And that is about it for this video as always. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, 
leave us a thumbs up below if you're not already consider subscribing to see more stuff like this and hopefully i'll see you in the next one see ya